Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing our works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration, the beginning of Holy Week, in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. So let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. The blessing of palms, let us pray. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Pan Gospel is written in the twelfth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the twelfth verse. The great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. Thanks be to God. Our Eucharist commences on page 202 of the Book of Common Prayer. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collects of Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and his humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should, should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes in the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. 
Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to, to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, who was coming in from the country, to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Lest the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with them also taught of him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for a light. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave out a loud cry, and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and the, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the Passion. Of our Lord.
In the name of the eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The greatest story ever told was a 1965 American epic featuring, among others, Telly Savas and Charlton Heston. And it recounted Jesus' life story, beginning with the wise men traveling to the stable, right through to his adult life, the Sermon on the Mount, his trial, crucifixion, resurrection, and even ascent into heaven. And it has Jesus saying to his disciples at the end, <coughs> I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Today we are presented with the end of Jesus' life, his passion as it's called, his trial, crucifixion and being laid to rest in the tomb. But that's not the end of the story. There's still a bit to come, and some would say the best bit. But it was how Jesus lived his life that is important, that's very important to how we live our own lives. Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus carry his cross. But how can we help Jesus carry his cross today, on the road through Holy Week? As Christians, we are baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what does it mean to be aware of this? To take up your cross and follow him, we are told. What is it to follow Jesus this week and every week? Isn't every week a holy week? Isn't every day a holy day? sanctified by God through his Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit prompting us to do as Jesus would have done? Attempting with the help of God to redeem our little bit of humanity, where we live and move and have our being. Through our baptism we have been identified with Christ. That is an interesting word, identified. It means we take our identity in some way from him. In some way, our person mirrors and is to mirror that of Christ. Of course it does in that we are human as Christ was fully human. We face similar challenges and pertain to the, that pertain to the human condition. We are mortal. We don't live forever bodily. But at some deeper level, a mystical level, we are connected to Christ. The baptism service talks about being grafted into the body of Christ being made regenerate. So after baptism we are in some deep way transformed and we are called to be Christian, which in itself means Christ-like. We take on his likeness, we are to become like him. We try to think and act like him with compassion, with understanding, kindness, inclusiveness, to love our neighbor, to put ourselves out for others, to make sacrifices. In so doing, we sacrifice our small ego self to our true selves, where Christ dwells, resides and lives. We attempt to conform our worlds to God's will. At the baptism service, we are asked, do you turn to Christ? We answer, I turn to Christ. When Christ was baptized, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit as a dove descended upon him. This is not to say he wasn't already full of the Spirit. In a special way, the Holy Spirit is present at our baptism too, and by grace dwells in us, in our mortal flesh. God makes his home in the very stable of our lives. Then at Jesus' baptism in a theophany from heaven, the Father's voice says, You are my Son, with whom I am well pleased. With baptism comes the promise these words are not past tense. Not meant for Christ alone, but miraculously we have been included, here and now for all eternity. God says to us, you are mine. We are not unacceptable, sinful, outsiders, shameful and condemned. And sometime after his baptism, Christ goes to the cross. He is lifted up and dies a horrendous death, death by crucifixion for humanity, for us. To show us the way of the cross, the way of the baptized. It's not just the greatest story ever told, 
It's probably the greatest metaphor ever used and the greatest story ever told. Rowan Williams wrote, The cross is our sign, and it is a sign of the kind of God we believe in. Jesus shows us the love of God on the cross. He says, Father, forgive. Here is a divine love that cannot be defeated by violence, no matter what we do. God cannot be put off. God keeps coming back. He cannot be dictated to by what we do, because it's against his character. You can do what you like, but God is God, and he loves and forgives because he is God. We might be caught up in the emotional economy of tit-for-tat behaviour, but God is not. God is free to be who he decides to be, and we cannot do anything about it. This is good news. God will always survive our sin and failure, and is never exhausted by what we do. God is capable of remaking the relationships we break again and again. That is the sign of the cross. The hymn often sung on Good Friday and Holy Week, When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory dies, My riches gain I count but loss, and poor contempt of all my pride. The writer of that hymn is looking at the cross, the sign of a love so amazing, so divine, that it demands my soul, my life, my all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess the Church's faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. At the beginning of this holy week, for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for Christian people, that through the suffering of this unity, there may grow a rich union in Christ, particularly thinking of our neighbouring Christian communities in South Belfast and the Christian communities of the Middle East, 
enter into this holy week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for Elizabeth, our Queen, for those who need laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, for those who experience conflict in Syria and in Iraq, and for the peace of the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who are wet down with sickness, pray particularly for Margaret those who experience failure or sorrow, who feel that God is far from them, mindful of the people of Boulder, Colorado, after the last shooting, and all who feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we, with those who have died in faith, especially with Anne and Ellen, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Now, in union with Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near, through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father Almighty and ever living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour, who for the redemption of the, of the world humbled himself to death upon the cross, that being lifted up from the earth, he might draw all people unto himself. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life giving Spirit, that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, we being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed of him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. draw you to himself and grant that you find in his cross a sure ground for, for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.